So the basic idea of statistical hypothesis testing is you're going to look at the performance of your systems on the individual queries before you did the averaging. So let's say I have this. I have five queries. I have system A that I built. I have the baseline system B. Um, these are the mean average precision numbers that, uh, that, I gener that each system produces on uh, on each of the queries, and you see that sometimes system A is better, uh, sometimes system B is better, uh, and it happens to be that overall, on average, system A is better uh, by a by a sizable amount. But uh, but you want to know is that you know is that is that due to chance or, uh, or or not? So so the idea of a hypothesis test is you construct a simple statistical model that allows you to test uh, to ask a question: Could you have gotten these? 10 numbers by pure accident, by chance. Right? So, um, and it's based on constructing a null hypothesis. So your null hypothesis, uh, this is what you want to disprove. Your null hypothesis is that systems A and B are really totally equivalent to each other. They're really the same system. Right? Uh, and and there, is no, there is no discernible difference in performance. So they're totally equivalent. Now, uh, each system has a natural variation of uh, scores, average precision or whatever measure you pick over the queries. And that's just because some queries are harder, some queries are uh, easier, right? So for example, this looks like an e Q1 looks like an easy query, and Q3 looks like a really hard query. So, um, uh, so there will be some natural variation in these numbers. Uh, so you could think about these numbers as being drawn from some distribution, from some statistical distribution. So the null hypothesis corresponds to the assumption that the numbers for A, this row, and the numbers for B were really drawn from the same distribution of numbers. Right? So, <clears throat> so the, they really are the same system, and you're just randomly pulling out numbers out of a hat, and you happen to pull out these numbers when you were measuring system A, and those numbers when you were measuring uh, system B. And what you do once you've defined <clears throat> once you've defined your null hypothesis in this way, what you want to do is you want to test it. And the way you test it is you compute what is the chance of the null hypothesis being true. So what is the probability of observing these two samples of numbers, assuming that they come from the same distribution? Because if they come from the same distribution, that means that A and B are really indistinguishable from each other. So you, you will compute that probability. And once you do it, you test it against the threshold. So if the probability is very, very small, say less than 5%, then we say, OK, that is enough for us to reject the null hypothesis, to say that the null hypothesis is too unlikely, and we're just going to uh, we're going to say that it, you know this is this is not the case. It's not the case that the two systems are equivalent to each other. So that is the way. If you manage to show that the probability of the null hypothesis is under five percent, that says that um, you reject the null hypothesis. So you have evidence to support that A is indeed better than B. Question. Uh, the same, okay, so the question is, uh, is the null hypothesis that they're the same system? Uh, you're right, it is not. Uh, so if it was the same, <coughs> if it was the same deterministic system, they would produce the same exact set of results, so the numbers would have to be exactly the same. No, it's, uh, what you're asking is, you're asking the question, um, could they be equivalent? Could you have just gotten unlucky for system uh, for system B, and really their scores have an identical distribution. You've just been a little bit unlucky with your uh, with your sampling. So that's really the null. Uh, that's null. Okay. So uh, so this is what you have to do. You have to um, assuming that they're the same. So assuming that these numbers and those numbers come from the same distribution through random sampling. What is the chance of that? Uh, what, what, is, what is the chance of seeing these exact uh, numbers? Or equivalently, what is the chance of seeing these differences that I'm seeing there? Right. So I guess um, 
And once you, once you start thinking about the differences, by the way, the reason you can think about differences is you have paired observations here. Right? I have run system A and system B on exactly the same set of queries. So I have, uh, for query one, I have a number for system A and I have a number for system B. So I could also look at the difference between A and B. Right? And really, um, so then the, question, uh, then the question becomes, how likely are you to see this set of differences, assuming that there is no difference uh, between the system, right? and uh, <clears throat> but of course to do that to generate a probability out of this set of numbers, you have to make some kind of an assumption about where uh, you know where do these where do these numbers come from? Right? So um, and if if depending on the assumptions you make, you end up with different statistical tests. So for example, if I made an assumption. That the average that these scores are normally distributed. So if the distribution is Gaussian, right? I have system A which is Gaussian, system B which is Gaussian. Uh, the differences of the two Gaussians should be Gaussian as well, right? Uh, so then the question is: Does this set of numbers? look like a set of numbers from a certain Gaussian. And if you were using a Gaussian, what kind of a mean would you expect from a Gaussian like that, under the null hypothesis? Zero. Yeah, zero, right. So if the systems are equivalent, the average difference between the scores should be zero, right? Sometimes it will be positive when system A is doing better, sometimes it will be negative, but on average, it should wash out to be zero. Now, we don't have a zero, we have a 0 0.15, Right? So then the question becomes, is 0 0.15, 0 0.15 a big enough number compared to the variance of the numbers in there? So, so that's the kind of reasoning we would be doing if we were doing uh, a z-test, uh, if we were assuming that average precisions are normally distributed. Now, it so happens that average precisions are not normally distributed, so you cannot do a t-test or a z-test on these numbers. Um, 